Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to make cosplay pistols. Unlike my other cosplay how-tos where I give you a rundown of the supplies you need to make cosplays, this one will focus more on the process behind all those steps and how to use all those supplies to make anything you need for your cosplays. But if you need to know the list of supplies, be sure to go back and watch my how to make cosplay armor and how to make cosplay weapon videos. So. Let's get started in making your cosplay pistols. So first things first, you always need to have a template that you're gonna trace out onto the foam. And for the pistol that I did, the smaller one that Lara Croft or Tomb Raider usually carries in the games, is from Sarah Croft, and I'll link her in the description below. She gives a nice printout that you could do. And uh, if you don't have a template, you could go on Google, search up pistol, and find a side profile of the gun. Then you could size it up and print it on multiple pieces of paper, tape the gun together, and that's your template that you're gonna use. When I have my template, what I do is I trace the cutout on some thin art paper so that I'll have a more accurate template that doesn't shift because it's on two pieces of taped paper. cut out your template, it's time to tape it onto the EVA foam, trace it out, and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife or whatever blade knife thing you're going to use, which I'll link in the description below what I use. What you gotta remember to do is trace both halves of the gun. And once you do that, it's time to cut it out. Cutting EVA foam can be a pain because it's easy to cut too much or to cut past the line and into your piece. And that really sucks because then you'll have to start all over. But what I do is I softly trace the outline I made after that, I'll run the knife through it, and it's okay if it doesn't go through all the way, because you're gonna do it at least three times till it's completely cut. It's better to cut slow for more accuracy. So take your time so that you don't ruin that piece when you're cutting it. Okay, so we have two halves of the gun. What's next? We're gonna glue them together with barge glue, and I'll link that in the description below. Now what barge glue is, is a contact glue, so you got to glue both sides of whatever is going to come together for it to stick together with a tight cement fit. So when it comes to gluing with the barge glue, what you got to do first is heat both sides of where you're going to glue with a heat gun or a hair dryer. Then apply a thin layer of barge glue to both of these pieces. So what I do is I dry it a bit with the heat gun or the hair dryer and then let it sit for at least like 15 minutes, give it some more dry time. And once I think it's dry enough, I put them together. So when it comes to putting it together, try to do it as slow as you can because once those pieces are glued together, it's really hard to take them apart. So keep that in mind. those two pieces together and now it looks like one gun well one flat gun doesn't really look like a gun at all but we're gonna change that the first thing you got to do though is to get rid of those rough edges around the foam so you're gonna take a dremel or sandpaper and you're gonna carve it out so it has smooth edges with the dremel I recommend practicing first 
to get adjusted to the speed and the type of sandpaper you're using because once you carve off that foam it's not coming back and you don't want to mess up the whole gun and restart the whole process so practice first so once you're feeling confident trim and smooth those edges what i find is that you don't need a fast speed for it so don't go too crazy now with the other option of sandpaper there's all different kinds of sandpaper at the hardware store and I don't really use sandpaper because it's a lot of work and it hurts my hand a bit so if you're gonna do the sandpaper route good luck with that okay so the gun still looks like two pieces glued together that's okay to remedy that we're gonna use quick seal or plumber's glue which you could find at your local hardware store and you're gonna take that and you're gonna fill that gap that's made after gluing both pieces on. So what I do with the quick seal is I put it on a thin piece of foam and I wipe it in the crevice between the two glued pieces, which kind of makes it not look like two glued pieces anymore. And uh, remember to put it on with thin layers. Whew. Okay, that's halfway now and we're up to the fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I mean details. Now with a pistol, you'd be adding the cylinder and the barrel and whatever else that goes to make that gun look real. So the template already had a box cut out for the barrel. So all I had to do really for that was measure that opening and take a piece of foam and wrap it around till I found a good fit. And once I did, I glued that together and made the cylinder. And to give the detail of the bullets, I took a thin piece of foam and I cut out the little design and I glued it on top of that cylinder that I made. It was a lot of trial and error to find the right size, but you're going to try to find one that's a little bit looser so that you could put detail on top of it. So when it comes to making the barrel, what you got to do is shave off a lot of that flat area, make it rounded, and make it a little bit smaller than the rest of the gun so that when you take this thin piece of foam and you measure it out and you wrap it around that it doesn't look like it's too big for the gun and it's overlapping in any way so you're gonna have to be the judge of how much you shave off when it comes to making bumps what you gotta do is take a little stick that you make out of the thin foam glue it to the gun and then glue a bigger piece of thin foam over it so that you could kind of make it like look bumpy in a way. For the other details of the gun, you're really gonna have to just think out of the box. A lot of it is just taking the thin piece of foam, making little circles, and putting them in different places. And the fun level is only going up from here. The next step is plasti dipping, and that means putting a rubber coating around your foam gun or weapon or whatever you're making. And you can find this plasti dip at your local art store or automotive store. When you're going to plasti dip, wear clothes that you don't really care about because, like spray paint, it could get all over the place and it's so hard to get off. Also, wear protective goggles, a gas mask, and some plastic gloves just to be safe. When it comes to plastic dipping anything, it's always easier when the item is hung up. So for the gun, take a piece of string, a long piece of string, and uh, tie it on the trigger and hang it up. And then go ahead and start plastic dipping. And the cool thing about the string is that you could twist it and spray all the parts that you couldn't get. So I get a lot of questions about how to plastic dip because a lot of people get the drips at the end of it. or not enough coating. So when I plasti dip, I keep a distance from the item I'm spraying. And what I do is I'll spray before I actually hit the item and I'll keep spraying after I hit the item. After keeping that distance and I've seen that I've missed some spots, I'll go a little bit closer but not too close because then you'll have those drips and you're gonna over soak it and you really don't wanna do that. So after the whole weapon or armor is plasti dip, 
it needs to dry and the drying time says a minimum of four hours i usually give it six hours to make sure it's fully dry you don't want to mess it up when it's not dry and now for the step that makes everyone feel like they're an artist it's painting and that's super fun but also super time consuming because you can make any look you want add weathering aging make it look warm and torn have blood on it you name it for painting what i use is americana acrylic paint which you could buy at your local art store and a bunch of a variety of brushes and what i do is i paint three layers of acrylic paint for any kind of cosplay I'm working on just so that fills up that foam layer. So when it comes to the gun there's a lot of metal and what I want to do is put wear and tear eventually on that metal part. So I take black paint and I put three layers of black paint on anything I want metal and then I'll paint on one layer of metallic paint but I'll paint it on with a sponge brush and the reason why is that it adds to the wear and tear because you'll still see that black acrylic paint behind it. So you're going to have to go in one direction with that sponge brush or else it'll look all over the place and not natural at all. For other pieces on the gun that aren't metal, it depends on what color Plasti Dip you use. So if you used white Plasti Dip, that's fine. You could start painting that color that it is layer after layer. I'll probably do like seven to eight layers of that color till I'm satisfied. But if you have a darker color, you're gonna have to paint a lighter color before the actual color or else it's gonna come out darker than what you intended. So what I do is I paint those pieces metallic and then I'll paint the main color that it is seven or eight times till that color actually comes out and you don't see any of the metallic anymore. When it comes to weathering, and I do have a how-to on that, I'll link it in the description below, you take black paint, dab it on, and you take a paper towel and you wipe it off right away. And you keep doing that till you're satisfied with how much wear the gun has. And I will put wear and tear on these regular pieces too, so for those ones you either do black again or brown or a darker color of whatever that main color is. Hell yeah, everyone. Give yourself a pat on the back because you made it to the finish line. The last step is sealing the paint on the weapon or pistol or whatever you're making. And that's taking floor cleaner, which I'll link in the description below, and putting one layer over that whole pistol, weapon, whatever. So for sealing the paint, I mentioned that floor cleaner. I use the Pledge floor cleaner and you put on one thin layer of this pledge floor cleaner with a paintbrush and now your paint is sealed and now it won't be ruined and washed off in any way so your pistols cosplay weapons whatever you're working on is finally done or at least hope it's kind of done or in the process of being done because it's time to show off what you did at comic-con show off all that hard work and it is hard work should give yourself another pat on the back for that. If you need any help, let us know in the comments below. And if you need more details on the supplies, check out our other cosplay how-tos, which is how to make weapons and armor. And if you need help with painting on wear and tear or weathering, check out that how-to in our channel too. Stay tuned for our next cosplay how-to.